this is an idiot's guide to uh, match fishing on uh, commercial waters. What we're hoping to achieve is to see if a normal person like me, an average angler, can go and compete in a match at the top level, just turn up and have a go. That's kind of what we're going to do. Now the first thing you've got to do is try and find a match to fish in. I think most people, what most people's route into match fishing generally would be go to your local angling club because there'd be loads of matches wherever you live in the country on local lakes, little small, um, little small matches, all lakes, rivers, canals. I've gone straight in to uh, a big open. I know I think generally you spend quite a few years at club matches until you get to the sort of open scene. That would be what a normal person would do. I'm going straight in. Um, now, when, this video is not really going to be about tactics too much, about um, the style of fishing I'm doing with each method. I mean, we, we can sort of look at future videos, single individual videos on each type of method that I'm using. Um, this is just some basic stuff that you need to have a go at a match. So the other day when I was here, I filmed a little bit of my setup just so you can have a look of the things that you need just to compete in a match. Right, so there's kind of a basic setup. So I have a bit of some bobs and the rod bag. Right, you're gonna need a seat box. Now I've gone for a second hand option, this Preston one, uh, which I brought in lockdown or just after lockdown i got that for about 100 pound on facebook marketplace i mean do you need a really expensive seat box like if i spent a thousand pound on a seat box i don't believe that's really going to catch me any more fish at the moment but you do need a seat box um because you've got all these various attachments on it now um We've got this Preston rod breast thing here that I've brought. Um, and on there we've got set up, a pellet waggler, a bomb rod, um, and a method feeder rod. Um, so that is basically, you need everything to hand when you're fishing. So I can change rods really quickly. Um, all the attachments that I've got are all Preston Innovation. So that's why I brought the Preston seat box, because everything fits on it. Now we've got this Dutch feeder arm with a Preston bit uh, head on it. These are very solid. I mean, you could probably get away with having the cheaper, just sort of single armed one really, but th I really like this and I can sort of move it around when I'm fishing. So if I'm fishing over there, I want the rod sort of at 90 degree angle, but if I fish over there, I can sort of move over there. So. The rod tip has always got a nice bend on it. Um, now this is important. This, this is your keep net bar. So you have your keep nets and they they slot into here. There's a little bit that goes in there. Uh, you open it up like that and it slots on. So I can get three Preston Space Saver nets on there. I believe you can get extra bits as well, and you could actually have five nets here. Uh, we'll talk about keep nets in a minute, because that's obviously an important part of fishing. Uh, landing net, depends what sort of lake you're on. Um, we're at the Syndicate today, on the Syndicate Lake at Gold Valley. So we're going to be catching a fairly big carp, so we've got a bigger net. If we were over on Middle Lake over there, um, where we're catching lots of F1s, I'd probably have a smaller net. Um, right, side tray. See, when we're sat on here, you see how I've got everything is to hand. I can change rods, all my bait. I can do everything without moving. Right, so initially I brought this uh, Preston side tray. Now, um, it's got this hood on it. Now, th these hoods are really good when it's raining. Obviously, it keeps everything dry. Um, the other thing is when it's windy and everything doesn't blow off. So I, I quite like these hoods. Some people don't like the hood on them, I believe, because they think they get in the way. I really like them. Now, I think I brought the smaller tray. Now, within the first time using it, I realised that's not big enough. So I wish I'd got the larger one. But they're quite expensive. So what I've done is I've just brought a cheaper tray and put on there. You see all these Preston stuff, it all just attaches onto it, which is really handy. So I've got a small tray there, a bigger tray there for all my bait. Um, you can see here in the, in the rod roost thing. I will do some more in-depth sort of uh, a look at all these little bits and bobs in future videos. So do give us a subscribe.
Um, but today I'm just sort of showing you what I think you need to actually fish in a match. Um, obviously you need some bait tubs. Uh, this is my sort of method feeder, my method feeder sticky pellets there. They're the Sonu Bates ones that I've been using. Um, I've just started using this Guru method mold and these are absolutely brilliant. I wish I'd brought one ages ago. That's a large one so you can really load it up because it's warm and the, the fish are feeding. This catapult as well is I've just bought the new Guru catapult. I love that as well. Uh, brilliant for firing pellets out. That would generally be full up with all my sort of eight mil pellets for um, the pellet waggler. And then, um, you know, I might have some meat in there, some sweet corn in there. I've got some water in there. Water seems really handy to keep these perfect if they dry out a little bit. Um, I've got some mixed wafters and bits and bobs. We're not really looking into the tactics um, so much in this video, but there will be further videos on each individual tactic that I'm using. So what I've perfected with the, the method um, and the pellet waggler and fishing the bomb. We can do each individual videos on that and what I've learned uh, and what I'm still trying to learn. Um, right, let's have a look. So I said keep nets. Obviously in a match, you keep everything in a keep net and it's weighed at the end. Now, the first sort of important thing is most of these commercial fishers, they have uh, net limits. So you can't have any more than say 50 or 60 pound in each net. Now, if you go over that weight in each net, you lose the whole net. <laughs> so you don't want to be doing that, do you? So you've got to estimate how much um, is in each net. So obviously you can't go over. So you've got to kind of estimate how many fish is in each net. And when the net's sort of near its limit, you move on to the new net. Now, I guess what you have to do is you have to sort of underestimate because obviously you don't want to go over or else you'll lose the net. So if it's a 50 pound net limit, I'm going to try and get an estimated 40 pound in each net so I don't go over. To do this, you're going to need some sort of a clicker. This is the matrix one. Um, so each time you catch, I don't know, five pound of fish, you put five pound on it. And then when you get up to sort of say 40 pound, which you've estimated, then you move on to the new net. So uh, that clicker is massively, massively important because I don't think you'll ever remember um, you, you, the weights in each net. Um, you also need, we haven't got the net set up today because we're pleasure fishing and um, you're not allowed to keep nets when you're pleasure fishing on most lakes. So uh, obviously on the day, the nets will all be there and set up. Um, you normally as well you need a separate net for silverfish in f1s and carp under two pounds um so you need one silver net and then one uh, all the other nets are for all your carp now how many nets do you need well that that's uh, it depends where you're fishing because like here i think on this lake on wednesday the match was what I think it was around 140 pounds. I think it can go up to sort of 250 some days. So say the lake you're fishing, the, the winning weights are sort of 200 pounds. You're going to need at least four nets if it's a 50 pound limit in each net. So you're going to need um, a keep net bag. This is a map one which I really like. This is the extra, extra large stink bag. Obviously nets get a bit manky, but um, the, the zips are really good on these. Um, right, so open that up. So in here, we've got one, two, three, four, I think there's four or five nets in there. That's a spare landing net, but I could get my other landing net in here as well. You can also put some uh, your side tray in there. I actually squeeze that big tray in here as well. So this is really useful getting that extra, extra large stink bag, just because for this particular match, I've got four nets, two keep nets, and all my bits and bobs, it's all in there, it's all safe. Um, and of course, everything, when it's wet and horrible, you can transfer that in the car, and it's not going to, and it's kind of not gonna all get everything wet in the car, if you know what I mean. So, um. What other bits and bobs we've got? I mean, obviously, you're not going to need my filming tripod. I mean, I have got an unhooking mat there 
And I'm kind of using that just because, um, you know, I'm taking some pictures today because obviously we're not going to be taking pictures of the fish in the match because they go straight to keep and let me try and catch another one. Oh, I've got some towels as well for your hands, that's important. So this is a Tronix Pro. Tronix Pro is actually a sea angling brand, um, but it's, the, it's a 27 litre bucket. And what they've got, they've got these round cool buckets, which I've actually got one. Obviously these don't need to be kept cool, they're pellets, but it's quite handy. You can put them in there, zip it up, put it in there. Then it's got another tray here. It comes with this tray with a bucket. And then, um, I can put, I can mix ground bait up and bits and bobs in the bucket, all this tray. Um, and you can actually get another cool bag on the top. I actually use this other cool bag for filming bits and bobs uh, and it keeps it all nice and dry. It also comes with a nice lid. So that's um, my favourite fishing bucket. I am going to do another review on that, um, but that is fully, fully recommended. Um, and then obviously we've got our rod bag. We've got a couple of spare rods, landing net handles, um, and bits and bobs there. So that's kind of what you're going to need or the absolute basics of what you're going to need. Um, as I say, we, we can do small videos on Pacific things as a train going past. Uh, we can do um, videos in the future on different things, why I'm using them, what's good, what's bad, and I can leave links in the description. But this is just a bit of an overview of what you need to compete in a fishing match. Like some of this stuff, like the trays and the feeder on, it can get really, really expensive. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> It doesn't, it all looks like just little bits and bobs, but yeah, it, it costs pretty much a fortune to go match fishing. Um, but obviously at the moment we're building up our equipment, but a lot of that stuff you do, you are going to need that to compete in a match on a commercial fishery. Um, all we need to do now is try and catch some fish. So th that's the basic setup. Now, here, I mean, you might need a barrow or some sort of trolley to take your stuff to the water. I've drawn this peg, was it 107 on Syndicate? My car's only parked just there, so I've carried my stuff here. But a lot of matches, you probably will need a barrow. I've got a cart barrow I use, or you get the specialist match sort of trolleys. Um, leave um, some comments below. What's your sort of favorite trolley or barrow, or what do you use? Um, I would love people to leave comments if you're an experienced match angler. Um, and you can leave comments because there'd be people watching this video that want help and advice from people. So, so some friendly comments would be kind of much appreciated. And I think it'd be very helpful for new budding match anglers like myself. I've just arrived and it's not too bad of a drive from my house, about an hour, hour and 10 minutes without any traffic. Um, I've just got here and the, and the car park is absolutely full. You can't even get into the car park. I'll show you. Look, I'm actually after park out here on the road. So uh, yeah, a lot of people here, slightly nervous, slightly nervous because um. I don't know anyone at all here. <laughs> Most fishing situations I go to, I know people, you know, oh, hello, Bob, hello, how's your brother, blah, blah. I don't know a single person here. Um, so, yeah, it's not many situations in life where you sort of, I get nervous now, but um, I suppose we'll go mingle, see how the draw is done, and see what happens. <laughs> Excited, but nervous. What Jimmy Willis. Okay, so that's uh, 25. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, there you go. 
No excuses tonight. Oh, <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> just no. feel that rucksack of precious. <laughs> right on the house. Long pole shadow there, guys. One oh seven, Jimmy. One oh seven. Is that any good, Will? Yeah. 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 If you fish it right, it's good. <laughs> Thanks for the advice. <laughs> 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 Thanks for the advice. Right, so we've got one oh seven. So we're just driving down to Syndicate Lake. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
um, just because in that test run we did the other day, uh, when my feeder rod, um, I, I snagged it up, and I, I sort of didn't have time to sort of get it all made again properly. So I've, I've got two feeder rods, a bomb rod, and a pellet waggler. Looking down there, like every single person has a pole. Um, I've never done any pole fishing. It's certainly not the time to start experimenting. We're sticking the rod in line. What we know, or what we sort of know, we know the basics of. Um, and yeah, we're just going to try and catch a fish to start with, and we'll see what happens. Um, all my nets are lined up there. I presume we're probably only going to need two. Maybe we might need three nets. I don't know if the weight limit on the nets is 50 or 60 pound here. I'm going to check that on my phone in just a second. But I suppose I've got to aim for sort of 10 pound under just in case I don't go over that net weight because then you lose everything. You lose the, the whole net if you go over. So we don't want that. That would be a disaster. Right, so there's a lesson learned straight away. Is just like sea fishing, you get there with plenty of time, you're setting everything up, loads and loads of time, and I've missed the first spin of the match because I hadn't attached my waggler, uh, pellet waggler rig. So now, calm down. What I'm gonna, there's this fish out there, I can see the fish. Two minutes before the match, there is about four or five fish. <sighs> fish first cast would have been nice. So, the system we're using, ping some pellets. Cast about a metre past the pellets. Um, the pellet thing, put the, you know, the thing that stretches the band. Can't find that. <laughs> <laughs> Not that it matters too much, I'm putting them on my hands, so I'm going to have to have a look in a minute. I think the ducks are eating most of the speed. I've got the pellet waggler dotted right down. It's job to see it, actually, it has. So I reckon the bite's going to come in the first five to seven seconds. There's no bite. I'm going to come back a metre. This is my second chance for a bite. While I'm doing that, ping some more pellets in. Cast out again. The more I cast, the more chance I've got. And if this doesn't work, I'm going to chuck a bomb with some robin red meat over the top of it because obviously I'm getting some bait out in there. I'm also thinking of putting some feet down here in the edge and fishing a bomb down there. I've also got a method feeder I can chuck out if needed. There's no features here. Of course, I've been practicing with features. It's 14 minutes past, so I've messed about. I didn't have the hook link on. The float wasn't right. I should have done all that long before the match started. Right, we're firing some pellets out. Oh. <laughs> right. Right, so I have just caught a fish. It's my first fish in a fishing match. So we do have a fish, but it wasn't quite what we were going for, and I caught it in the side. <laughs> well, I wasn't even fishing. Right, it's 10 minutes past 12. Um, started off in the pellet waggler, wasn't quite prepared. I think I missed my chance. Moved to a bomb with me in the same place. Went back to the pellet waggler, went back to meat on bomb. I've been feeding this little margin here up. And I'm, the last two hours, that's going to be, I think, that's where I want to fish. I did just chuck it a bomb in there for five minutes, but with no good. Um, so we're sort of running out of ideas of what to do. So I'm going to chuck the old method feeder out. Well, a hybrid feeder, a bit of feed. Right. Hybrid feed has just gone round. Thank the Lord. <laughs> we caught fish. Oh. It's 
coming in very, oh, it's a bream. Oh, <laughs> oh, take that. That's the silver fish now. Right, we're up and going. I mean, a bream, I would take a bream. I'd have taken another three ounce roach, I'd say, but. So it's 12.36. The hybrid feeder saved me. 1236. Right. It is, I've just switched to a hybrid feeder. It's half two. I've got another fish, and I reckon it could be a bream because it seems to be coming in very easily. It is. <sighs> Another nice size one, though. Oh, the slime. Little duck lid. He's been around by my rod tip for an hour and a half now. I think he's lost his mum. The good news is I have found my band expander to put the pellets on. Only took me three hours. I've got Robin Red or I've got these, uh, the Marine Halibut. And I'm going for Marine Halibut, I think. Oh, that's easier with that band expander. Good bit of kit. I must buy a spare. Right, we're in again, I reckon it's a carp, it's 240, on that hybrid feeder again. Oh, this is what we need, we want a few fish. I'm going to play this very delicately because Oh god I've never been so nervous Oh it's come out Oh it's come Oh it came out the net and I've got it A nice one. Oh, that's what we wanted. That's what we wanted. Right, let's get some bit of control on the situation. Oh, that's that's a nice carp. That was a bit worrying for a while because I nearly lost it. I sort of panicked. Must have landed a thousand carp in my time, but that was an important one. Right, I'm gonna put it on my clicker in a minute. So that is the hybrid feeder again. I would say it's eight or nine pound, but it might be 10. So I'm gonna go up to 10 on the clicker because I don't want to go over the net weight. So I'd rather be a little bit under. So I've got, I reckon I've got about almost £10 in each net, possibly. Five past three, I've put the hybrid feeder in the edge, <laughs> in the margins, and I've caught one. Oh, some bream. Oh. <laughs> well, I've had three nice bream. I think this one's a little bit smaller, three pounds. Right. I'm going to keep that on. I think we've caught three fish on it now. Oh, look at it. Try and get that horrible slime off. 
I want that on the line, do we? Right, folks, it's 10 minutes to go. Nine minutes to go. Oh, be nice to have one more. A nice carp. Oh, three minutes to go. We've got a carp on. I chucked the method out and it's gone within 10 seconds. And it's very welcome. I wonder how big it is. <laughs> I could do with it being big. I sort of swam into the net in the end. Oh, it's a mirror. I reckon it's about £10. a nice lamp. <laughs> What's that? Well, yeah. no, <laughs> I'm trying to catch a carp. Yeah. Give you ten pounds. Ten pounds. Yeah, cheers, buddy. That's all right. What have we got on that? It's gonna be roughly give or take. Stay still. You tell them. 15 8. 15 8. And what was my total? Uh, twin. What was the total, Andy? 25 8. Right. That was my first ever fishing match. Yes, there were disasters. I got through it. Most importantly, I really, really enjoyed it. When I turned up, I literally, what you saw, I mean, I, I didn't know how anything worked. I didn't know anyone there. I was nervous. I completely messed up the start of the match because I'm pretty sure I should have had a couple on the pellet waggler straight away, but I wasn't ready. I was panicking. Um which is mad. Uh, you've seen in the video, I nearly, lost, I nearly couldn't land a carp, and there's no reason for this. I've landed carp to over £40 in my specimen fishing. I've caught catfish to £85, barbel to £14, pike to £30. I've done specimen fishing my whole life, and but it's weird when you get into this match situation, you're kind of like panicking. What's that? Oh, God, God, what's happening? And oh, it is, but it's a real buzz. If you've never fished a match, go and have a go. I mean, it's probably, I would probably suggest going to a sort of local club match and learning what you're doing there before you progress to the Opens. But you can just turn up at an Open. Right, result-wise. Now, what we're going to do in my match videos at the end, I normally do a bit of a, uh, a look back. What could I have changed? What could I have done better? Well, what could I have done better? everything <laughs> um, i think we're too early into the journey to start working out bits but each match that i do i'm gonna learn so much and then it's gonna take a year or so to get to work it out um i know that i need to learn how to use a pole um that that's all coming up in the future but the results from this match now i wasn't last what did i have 25 pound eight ounces there was a couple of carp um uh, and some and a nice little bag of silvers which was what was it just over 10 pound i think um or 10 pounds now i should have entered the silvers pools really because uh, i don't know um, i might have actually won that 
um, but I didn't really enter all the pools. I mean, that's something we haven't touched on at the start. You you pay a match fee to join the match. So I think the match fee was £25. And then you have optional pools on top of that. You will have top three in section, uh, the most silvers. So if you put an, an extra couple of quid in for the silvers pool, um, you can basically win whoever gets the most silvers. It's like an extra little competition happening within the competition. Um, I think in the future, of all pools, I'm just going to enter everything. Just, um, I just think maybe that's what you should do. What you're actually doing is just giving all the good people more money. But one day, like that silvers, the silvers in that match, I wasn't targeting the silvers, but I did catch some. So I could have been in a chance of winning some money there, you know? So that's what we need to think about. Um, the match from, the, there was about four weeks ago, this match. I mean, so busy at work. I haven't had time to edit it all up. But the results from the Syndicate Lake were uh, Adrian Fuller with £126 from Peg 122 Around that area seems to be the area you want to be. The second was Jack Fuller, £106 from Peg 112 Sections was Tom Arnott uh, with a hundred and uh, from Peg 114 with £85 three ounces. Ryan McDonald also won his section with £96, 12 ounces, uh, and from that was from Peg, 120 Matthew also won his section with £77, 8 ounces. So well done to everyone. Well done to Adrian Fuller for the win. Um, now, what's next? Uh, a lot more practice is needed, but uh, about two days after this match, I decided the next logical thing to do was enter a Fishermania qualifier at Todba. Yep, yeah, that's the next one. <laughs>